We're continuing our studies in Chapter 6 on how enzymes work, and in this lesson we want to review the catalytic mechanism of the digestive enzyme chymotrypsin. It's a good example for us to consider because in the course of its reaction we'll see actually several examples of different types of catalysts. It's part of a large family of serine proteases. A protease is simply an enzyme that digests protein. That is, it breaks peptide bonds. The catalytic mechanism always involves a serine residue, hence the name. In this case, we have illustrated the catalytic triad that's part of the active site, and that's pictured in the ball and stick model on the lower right here. So we have aspartate 102, histidine 57, and serine 195. The numbers indicate their position in, within the primary structure, and so you can see they're widely separated from one another in the primary structure. And yet when the enzyme adopts its final tertiary fold, these amino acid residues are perfectly positioned within the active site. Not only must they be within the active site, but they must be at the right positions in, their, in order to carry out their functions. So it's a really good example of how protein structure is so vital for function. It's not important you remember these numbers, but you do need to know each of these residues and what their roles are in the catalytic mechanism. Serine provides the nucleophile, there are oxygen atom. Histidine is going to act as a base catalyst to activate the serine residue. Later it will be an acid catalyst. And aspartate is playing more of a supportive role. It's helping to stabilize the histidine in the course of its reaction. Overall, the reaction mechanism is one of covalent catalysis. Remember, that involves a two-step reaction where the enzyme actually forms a covalent bond with its substrate. So let's follow that reaction sequence. Here we have the catalytic triad in blue in the active site, our covalent catalyst, our serine residue, histidine, our base catalyst, and here's aspartate. It's stabilizing the histidine by means of that hydrogen bond. So that's our catalytic triad. You want to notice the roles of each of these amino acids as we go through. Now here's the substrate, our peptide, and the bond to be broken is the red line here. So here's the amine group and the carbonyl group as a part of that peptide bond. We call the bond to be broken the sisal bond, just as scissors are used to cut things. So the sisal bond is the bond to be cut or broken. Now you'll notice we have on one end the C-terminal part of our peptide, that's the R sub C, and here's the N-terminal part, R sub N. So in other words, our peptide bond is somewhere within this peptide. The first thing that happens is histidine is going to act as a base catalyst to extract a proton from serine. So here's our electron-rich nitrogen atom. It's going to extract a proton and form a new bond with hydrogen. As it does so, it, that hydrogen will break its bond with oxygen, and that allows the oxygen atom to form a new bond with carbon. So here we have the resolved structure from the previous slide. Nitrogen has formed a new bond with that hydrogen atom. It now carries a positive charge because it was a proton. We've broken the bond between oxygen and hydrogen, but it does form a hydrogen bond, and that's the dashed line here. The oxygen on the serine has formed a new covalent bond with the carbonyl carbon, and notice that carbonyl carbon now is a tetrahedral intermediate. Notice it's also one of those unstable carb anions. So this is our unstable tetrahedral intermediate, and that's pictured as our first energy hill up here, our unstable tetrahedral transition state intermediate, X1 double dagger. In the next step of the reaction, the histidine is now going to act as an acid catalyst. Remember, it has that proton it can donate, only instead of giving it back to serine, it's going to donate it to the nitrogen that's part of that sisal bond that we're going to break. As it does so, that nitrogen-hydrogen bond will break, it will receive back its electron and again be neutral, and will form a new bond between the nitrogen and the peptide bond and that hydrogen atom. In that case, in order for the nitrogen to form that bond with hydrogen, it must break its bond with carbon. 
and so once we've done so we will break that peptide bond. Notice that when this reaction sequence ends we will have added a hydrogen atom to that peptide bond. We will thereby when we break this bond release the C terminal part of our peptide and form a, a new amine terminus on that portion of the peptide. So here's the resolved structure. We've actually accomplished our goal of breaking the bond and we've released the C-terminal portion of our peptide. But now we have the rest of our peptide covalently attached to our serine residue. So if we look at our reaction diagram, this is the hill between the valley between our two hills. We form that covalent bond. So we've accomplished our goal of breaking the peptide bond. The histidine is back into its original form, but now we have a covalent intermediate, a covalent attachment between the enzyme and the substrate. And remember, we have to resolve the structure before we're finished. And so that's what we're going to do in the next step. The next series of steps are simply a repeat of exactly what we just seen. It's just that the nucleophile is different. So again, we have histidine acting as a base catalyst, only now our nucleophile is water. And so histidine is going to extract a proton from water. It'll form a new nitrogen-hydrogen bond here. And that will allow the oxygen in the water to act as a nucleophile to attack our carbonyl carbon here. So this is exactly like step one on our earlier slide. After we've done so, now we have a new nitrogen-hydrogen bond here. Again, that histidine is carrying that positive charge. Remember, it's stabilized by this histidine-hydrogen bond over here. And now we have a, an, a carbon-oxygen bond with our peptide here. And so now we have a new tetrahedral intermediate. That carbonyl carbon is now again a tetrahedral intermediate, an unstable carb anion. This is our second energy hill here, X2 double dagger. And so we must resolve the structure. We do so in this case now. Histidine can now donate that proton back to serine. And so we have accomplished our goal of breaking the peptide bond, and the active site looks just like it did when we began. So the enzyme has been regenerated. And here's the N-terminal portion of our peptide, which we'll release. So you'll notice that in the first case, we added a hydrogen atom to the nitrogen of the sisyl bond. And in this case, we added OH to the carbon of the sisyl bond. So overall, we simply added water to the bond. It was hydrolyzed, that is, lysed by adding water. In our next lesson, we want to look at how chymotrypsin is able to stabilize these transition state intermediates, those carbonyl carbon tetrahedral intermediates and we'll see the residues that are involved in that stabilization.